Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and choosing to watch my videos today. Um, as you can see from my videos today, the Lord has had me dealing with a lot of things. Um, I did a video today that was a mini testimony where I says, you know, I, you know, witches go to church. I didn't know that. And a testimony in which the Lord revealed those things to me. I sent that in another video. And, um, I did another one called the child a child of hell which comes from matthew 23 and i shared some things there god is called calling his people to a place of um, accountability for yourself you know we can go and even though we have experienced things in our lives whether it's from family members the church things of that nature we are still going to be held accountable for ourselves so God is calling us to a place of accountability. The things that God reveals to us, you can't close your eyes again and say, I never saw it. Once God shows you something, once God opens a door for you, a way of escape, once he reveals some things and you choose to still remain there and want to blame a person, then it's on you. It's one thing if you don't know, but once you know and God begins to show you things and reveal things and uncover things, then you are going to be held accountable, my brothers and sisters, for yourselves. So the thing is that God is able to do anything that we ask. Ask and we shall receive. Seek and we shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. And some of you may say, oh, I've been asking and seeking and knocking and ain't nothing happened. But I want to tell you that the minute you ask God for something, if you're lined up with his will, it is already manifested in, and he's in agreement with it. It's already manifested right then in the spiritual. It's a matter of it manifesting in the natural and it will in due time. But a lot of times, sometimes people are asking and knocking, your knuckles bleeding, ain't nothing happening. Sometimes because you're asking for something and yet there is still some sin in you, some areas that's unsurrendered. Uh, you're not being obedient to the Lord, trust me, or God is simply saying, wait, <laughs> God is, he's not a liar. You understand? So we just need to trust him. But right now, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing that God cannot do. There's nothing he cannot pull us out of. So when he shows you things, we need to stick to God and we need to trust him and allow him to bring us through, bring us to a place of healing. And that's going to be taking it of accountability and responsibility and getting to a place of having childlike faith in Christ, the same sort of commitment and then some that you had for this man or woman that you loved or these group of people you're trying to get into or these people that were running a church. God needs you to have that with your whole heart, soul, and mind. This is what he's looking for. So God is calling us to a place of accountability. So here's a few things that the Lord has laid in my spirit to share with you all. My brothers and sisters, sometimes you've been in churches where you're, you are still in a covenant with relationship with them. You're still in covenant because you went there and you were touching and agreeing with a lot of different things. Some of you, they had oil that they prayed over and gave you a small little bottle to take home and anoint your kids. Some of you, they've laid their hands on you and had the whole church laying hands on you. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, even they didn't do that, before church opened, they were in there praying over every chair and every seat, and you were there. You brought your children there, you sat there, and you sat under them. <laughs> Ignorance is one thing, but as I said, when God reveals things to you, there are times you just still, you sat there no matter what they were doing. You saw that they were in their flesh, and you stayed, you stayed there. You, you saw that they were doing wrong. Maybe you worked on the staff and you saw things up front and clear that they were doing stuff wrong, but you allowed your allegiance to them to override the word of God, to override what you knew. And sometimes you didn't even know the word of God, but you know what you saw was wrong because they're doing stuff that you saw out in the world or you did out in the world. God is calling his children to a place, a place of change of heart turning away from certain things things that used to happen there's there's some of you my brothers and sisters generational things you have to take accountability for those things and you have to renounce those ties 
those ties, those, those generational curses that's come down the line. You can see things that's coming from generation to generation. And when God shows you these things and he opens up your eyes, you need to go before him. You need to ask him to help you and to show you how to overcome these things that's come down from, from generation to generation. The things that you experience in your relationships. The things that you're experiencing maybe with your children. The things that you're experiencing maybe being not able to have a child and people before you weren't able to have a child. These are all generational things. But the biggest thing that the Lord has shown me is that you have to be very, very careful in these last days who it is that you are, you are in connection with, and you have to do an in, an inventory of the things that you just things you just ordered online. Someone told you to buy this prayer cloth. Someone told you to buy this oil, and you just got it in your house, and you put it on your body, and you put it on your kids, and you're putting it all over. God is calling you to a place of being able to see things, to spot these things through the power of the Holy Spirit and to break those bonds, to break those covenants that were made. Everybody that you fasted with was not of God. Everybody that, everybody that, um, everybody that you, that, that was touching and agreeing with you was not of God. Okay. Not everybody. So sometimes you're going you're gonna to say, well, how am I going to know who is who? I'm going to tell you to just go before the presence of the Lord, renounce these things, tear them down, cast them down, go through the word of God and find scriptures, go through Psalms. Psalm has some good ones. David has some good ones, you know, but you are taking authority. You have dominion and power. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. God, your word said is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. God, you said you're making me the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. You know, God, you said you have, um, you know, you want to give me an expected end, oh God. And you said you're going to snatch the hairs out of the, snatch the hair out of the scalp of my enemies. You shall break the teeth of my enemies. My enemies will come to me one way, but flee seven. You have set my feet in an even place. My enemies shall run when nothing chases them. The angel of the Lord shall encamp around me and chase my enemies away. Go through, just flip through your psalm and speak things and speak what God says. I am covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. The word says that if I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything else shall be added unto me. That includes victory. That includes safety. That includes coverage. That includes I am safe on every side. I'm safe from witchcraft. I'm safe, I'm safe from generational caps. I gaps. I break it. I renounce it and just ask the Lord to forgive you because a lot of times, guess what? You find that you're walking into a lot of little habits, the things that your mom, your dad did, your great grandmama did, you know. So these are the things you have to do. You have to do the same thing with these covenants and things that you entered into, into these churches. A lot of people are so quick to join a church because you've been told, oh, you need to be in a church. You need to be in a church. It's good to fellowship. It's good to um, come together with the saints. But I'm here to tell you that these days, there's a lot of ain'ts around, more so than saints. And you can't take it for granted where they tell, oh, you shouldn't be worried about that. No, you can't walk into any old place because a lot of these places are a butcher shop. That's what you're walking into. And you have to realize the depending on what is on the altar of that church, an indication of what is on the altar is what is allowed on the altar. Well, who do you see standing up there? What does she not have on? You understand that? What does he not have on? What is he showing too much of? What are they saying? What are they omitting? What are you not hearing? Are you finding that there's a lot of cookie cutter, um, um, very bland and very, um, mm, what's the word, neutral messages? You have to know, but if you are not in the word of God and if you're not seeking God, you don't know what to look for. Stop being quick to join churches, my brothers and sisters. You can go fellowship. You can go visit. People tell you, oh, where's your covering? Tell me the Bible. We're talking about I, if I don't have the covering of a man, I'm not covered. I'm not saying that if you, you're in a church and you found a church home and that man or woman of God is following the Lord, it's true, that great, but they're not your covering. Jesus Christ is your covering, not man. It can never be man. 
If, if they was enough to be my covering, then they would have been on the cross. They would have been crucified for me. But God got crucified for all of us. So what am I saying? Am I telling you to rebel? No. I'm telling you to keep your perspective where it is Jesus Christ. So that you can go wherever God tells you. If someone's not telling you, oh, if you leave out of here, oh, oh this is going to happen to you. No. This is why the coronavirus came now. Where's the covering now? Have they helped you put some food in the fridge? Are they checking on you? Are they making sure that you're okay? Are, are they risking it to come in to, to talk to you? Do, do they believe that they can be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ to come in and, and, and touch and agree with you in your home? No, they follow the rules, okay? Because they are not God. Let me end this video, my brothers and sisters, by saying there's a lot of covenants that has been made, a lot of covenants that you made with these churches it, look around your house some of you you know long in the ministries things were revealed to you but you still got that little vial of that oil that they gave you up in your house you need to lay hand on your children yourself your family and lift off every demonic pact in prayer that was said over you in the name of jesus because a lot of times you don't know the heart of people a lot of times people are standing on the pulpit or standing on on a getting in front of you on social media speaking god but when they log off when they sign off when they close out that link they are in there drinking and smoking and getting drunk and cursing and doing all types of stuff and watching all kind of vile things so you have to have discernment do you know how many times i've got on looked on a video and immediately i can see what this person is all about and i don't listen to it i just don't because god will show you you're going to have discernment the more you spend time in the presence of the lord the more that you're fasting, the more that you're praying, God is going to show you. And you're going to find the less your circle is going to become. Because you're not of this world. You're not of this world. So it's time to break those covenants. It's time to go through, do an inventory of your house, go through those drawers, go through those closets, get rid of those outfits that you got from your ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, take off the little magnet of when y'all went on this vacation together, throw out those little things. I don't care what it was. I'm going to tell you a true story. I had a few things that not right away because I remember when I had broke up, I ended it with my fiance. And the first thing when I was going to this church, the person told me to get rid of all his stuff and get rid of this, get rid of that. And I remember the Lord saying, no, don't get rid of anything. Don't move anything right now. And I didn't understand why. So anyway, as time went on, as the Lord took me on a 30 day fast, dealt with different things with me, blah, 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 praying, it's forgiven, all of that. And then at that time, he started to tell me, okay, now it's time to go in the closet and get rid of things. And that was like maybe months later after God had really just, whew, it was oh, best time ever. And let me tell you, I had to go in and get rid of all types of stuff. I must say, this man was a great gift giver. From Gucci watches to different things. I always had any gift that he gave me was expensive. Not that I was like, you got to give me this, but he had great taste. So everything he gave me, I had to get it. Now I was thinking, oh, I just give it away. But the Lord was like, no, throw it away because there's a significance to it. It's not like you still, it, there's significance to it. So I had to go in and get rid of all that type of stuff. So I went in and realized I had so many little things. So everything I got rid of, and threw it away. Then I had to go through my house and find little things from other connections and things of that nature. So that's what you have to do. Go through your home. See where you may have things from whatever. Now don't go in and just go crazy. Pray and ask the Lord to show you. But in all things, my brothers and sisters, we have to renounce, we have to denounce, we have to take authority. We need to disband and remove, remove everything. That is not of God and those bonds out of our lives because you find you find yourself constantly being hindered. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for this time, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord to those that are called according to his purpose, to your purpose. 
Father, we come to you right now asking you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for every sin we have done or thought, put our hands to, and don't even realize we were thinking. Known and unknown sins, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, for times that we have walked in generational curses, gaps, and habits. Father, I come against every principality and power, every agreement that has been made in our lives upon us by our forefathers, generational, great, 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 greats, even our parents. Father, every prayer that has been prayed, any agreement that's been made with the supernatural, any time our name or picture was placed on an altar, any time a prayer was said to cause us harm, in the name of Jesus, every filthy word, every word that has been spoken against us, whether it's by our parents, our leaders, people who we think are our friends, speaking against us. We bind it up. We shut the mouth of the enemy right now. Father, you said whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So we bind up every plan of the enemy. We stay the hand of the devil and his demons right now in the name of Jesus. Every negative word that has been spoken, every word, everything that has been said, every idle word that's been spoken against us, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Every word saying that they're going that we're going to fall, every word saying that our marriage will not work, Every word that's saying we'll never have children. Every word that's saying our ministry will not go forward. Every word that's saying our salvation is not real. Every word that says she or he is just like his mother or his father. We bind it up now in the name of Jesus and we cast it down. We stop every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you said you have made us the head and not the tail. And Father, you said if we trust in you with all our hearts and lean out unto our understanding in all our ways technology, you will direct our path. Father, you said that you will pull out your glittering sword and you will wet it and you will, you, God, you will destroy our enemies. Father, you will go before us as you went with the children of Israel. Father, you said we can come into the cleft of the rock, Lord God, and we're coming into your cleft right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you right now, oh God, that you're making us become as babes, as little children, trusting you, oh God, in everything. We thank you right now that we are cutting away and we're casting away anything that so easily besets us. We come away. We're cutting away those things that cause us, Lord, to, to be separated from you. We're casting away the things that causes us to offend and we're removing those things that cause us to stumble in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you for being our Lord and our King and our Master. We thank you right now that we are holding on, though we may have a little strength, oh God, and we're not going to allow anyone to take our crown. And Father, we shut the door of the devil right now in the name of Jesus. We call out every demonic spirit that wants to try to dwell in our homes and in our minds. We come against the spirit of depression and suicide and homicide and violence and anger and jealousy and strife and malice and, and bickering. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. We close the door to every demonic portal in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind up everything right now. Mothers that are against daughters, mothers who are infiltrated by evil spirits, daughters infiltrated by evil spirits against their mothers, children that are rising up against their mothers and parents and, and siblings. God, your word said in the last days, these things will come. But Father, you said whoever loves mother and father more than you is not worthy of you. So God, we pray for reconciliation. If it is possible, oh God, we will forgive God because your word says, if we don't forgive, neither will you forgive us. But Father, we know, Lord Jesus, that there are situations where we're being hindered and altered. We know that there are brothers and sisters in Christ out there who wants the relationships, who wants to have the, the relationships with siblings and families, oh God. But Father, sometimes you call us away from it, Lord God. Because it is a stumbling block. So Father, thank you that we're moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Doing your will and not looking back. And Father, as we seek you first, then everything shall be added. Meaning, God, as we seek you first, if it is your will that we are reconciled to those who go against us, to those who's going against my brothers and sisters in Christ, then, Father, it will happen. And, God, we pray that we'll always keep our hearts in a place not to have a heart of stone but a heart of flesh. 
Father, we thank you right now for victory. We step out of the generational curses. We step out of the generational habits. We step out of the, of God, of the, just the old way of thinking and the old way of doing things. We will not walk into these agreements and pacts that's been made. We are free and we close those doors now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, with that, God, let this not be a passionate prayer only, but Father, that we will change, that we will get into your presence, that we get into your word. The word of God is quick and powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirits and the joints of the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So we know we have to be in the word of God. We know that we have to get into your presence, Lord. We know we have to sit at your feet, Lord Jesus. We know, oh God, that's in you that we live and we move and we have our being. God, we thank you right now. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We will not walk in a curse. We will not walk in bondage. We will not walk under this, any type of witchcraft attempts on our lives in the name of Jesus. We renounce every laying on of hands that was not of you. We renounce every prayer and every, every falling out that was not of you, but was demonic. We, re we repent of it, oh God, for not seeing it, maybe not moving when we saw it. And God, we turn to you right now. We pray that you lift every tie, every soul tie with religious leaders that's still there in the name of Jesus. We renounce ourselves, our families, our loved ones, spouses, children. We reclaim our children in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, those of my brothers and sisters who are still walking in fear and don't know, God, I thank you right now that they will not be afraid to step out and to follow you, God. Father, sometimes it may feel like, oh God, you're sending me back to Egypt or Lord, where am I going to go? But Father, let us realize that you are everywhere and wherever you lead us to go, even if it seems like it's the wrong way, God, if you're there, it's got to be right. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we exalt you. We lift up your holy name for there is none like you in all the heavens and the earth. We give the praise today, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Whew, guys. All right, that was a long prayer. But I think it was necessary. Mm-hmm. Guys, you, you, you begin to give God praise and glory and move forward. It's not too late for you, no matter how old you are. Were you as old as, as, as Abraham was when the, the promise finally came? <laughs> he was like a hundred and what a hundred and never right so be strong and obey the lord all right peace out